What's going on guys, Rurnut44 back with you again for another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. But this time we're doing something a little bit different. So the last couple of videos we've mostly just been kind of exploring the backcountry. And uh, well, I mean that's, that's really about it. But in this video, well, we're still going to be exploring the backcountry. But in a little bit different of a way. I got a location I found, I want to go check it out and maybe see about putting a campsite there. Here where you can see on the map, Alaska in front of us on Bing Maps. We're going to zoom in here. So here's Anchorage. We go on up the river here. Here's Talkeetna. And then if we go on over here to the uh, Tokositna Glacier, which is right next to Ruth Glacier here on the right hand side. And we go down here to the bottom and we look there's a little bit of a bear spot here and it's kind of unnatural right it's a very straight line it's kind of been run down a little bit blown over and you can see some kind of blowing pattern where it's kind of gets widens out here at the end of it so i'm thinking that this is an unmarked backcountry airstrip that sees some private use not necessarily from somebody that owns this property but just you know local pilots it's a local knowledge airstrip is what it is it's an off airport airstrip so what we're going to do here is we're going to fly over from snowflake lake the little airstrip here we'll depart off runway 04 fly on out kind of hook it over towards this direction towards the tokositna glacier we'll do kind of a high pass looking at this area Swing back around, kind of follow the river up here on the right hand side, and we'll swing in for hopefully a landing right along that path there. And we'll park somewhere there. And if everything looks good, and it looks like a viable place to put a campsite, well, we'll jump on into dev mode and we'll start building the campsite. So, yeah, what do you think? Want to come along? Come on, grab your day pack, let's go. All right, flaps are up, and we are on course for the Tokositna Glacier. Good to see that you came along. You're looking mighty invisible today, but <laughs> I guess that just means you're kind of lightweight. And, uh, well, that's the type of cargo I like in my planes. The cargo that doesn't weigh a whole lot. Because that means I don't have to do any CG calculations. <laughs> just kidding, of course. Anyways, we're heading for Tokositna Glacier. And we're going to put a campsite there. Maybe. <laughs> There's a couple of things I should probably address while we're on our way over here. First thing I should probably address is this isn't my first rodeo today. And to make matters worse, it's not even my second rodeo. No, this is my third go. Three times I've tried to make a video today. <laughs> so, the first video... I actually found another campsite upriver here, and I flew out to it. It was on a gravel bar, and I got out to it, and the gravel bar was underwater, which no big deal. You know, we're, the whole thing's about making a campsite. So, you know, I found a place to land along the river, jumped into dev mode, and started working. So I got the water excluded off of all the islands. I redid all the trees on those islands there, and then I got to the point where I was just going to start working on you know kind of placing some stuff there and making the actual campsite and then i spotted it my old nemesis terraforming <laughs> and i i can't remember if i mentioned this on another video before or not but the reason i say my old nemesis terraforming is since sem update 5 there's been an ongoing issue with terraforming in the sem where it just doesn't work right and sometimes it just doesn't work at all and the major thing that gets me on a lot of add-ons that I have or that I've been working on 
is the fall off distance, which is basically the distance that you tell it that blends, you know, within that certain distance that blends with the surrounding terrain. So that if there's any elevation differences between the two, it's kind of a smooth transition, or it is a smooth transition. Well, in this case, terraforming just wasn't working at all. And there was a, I'd say a meter, meter and a half high ledge that ran across the river from one side to the other, directly over the sandbar that I intended aircraft to land on for the campsite. So obviously you have a meter or more drop, you're going slow landing, you're going to feel that once you launch off the other side of it. <laughs> and it's not going to be a pleasant experience. Not to mention, you're not going to be able to take off over it. So, unfortunately, that shut down that video because I basically cut the camera right then and there. I Well, at first I tried to work on it and troubleshoot it on screen and see if I could actually get it to smooth out. Obviously, it didn't work. Then from that point, I just said, okay, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> we'll catch up here later. And I cut the camera and cut the video recording. Then for the next two and a half, three hours, I proceeded to troubleshoot that even more. I got, I downloaded some three meter terrain data, replaced the entire train or what should have replaced the entire train in that area. That didn't even work right. No matter what I did, I could not get that ledge to go away. So basically I had to give up on it. Now I'm not giving up on it indefinitely. I am coming back to the area because that was the first area I wanted to do. I'm going to make it work eventually. I just need a Zobo to get their head in the game and get this freaking terraforming issue fixed that's been going on for several months now. And yeah, I, I tell I call it my nemesis because it's literally three quarters, three fourths of all the projects I have that I've been working on are affected by this in some way, shape, or form. And some of them, like Fantasy of Flight, I just flat out can't update. Because if I do, it messes up so much in the freaking scenery that it's just gonna be a headache more than anything. So, I've refrained from releasing some updates, from putting some products out, from progressing more on some products, just because at this certain time, it doesn't make sense to do it. So, that's my first failure of the day. <laughs> Moving on to the second failure of the day. This one's very recent. Actually, it happened about 15 minutes ago. <sighs> I did the entire beginning of this video and forgot to hit record. This entire flight from Snowflake Lake out to the glacier did this entire flight and forgot to hit record. I only realized it after I was on the ground, shut down, parked, and I went to stop the video. But you know what? I'm recording now. I can see it counting down. I made sure I was recording this time. I'm not making the same mistake twice. And yeah, we're on the correct heading. You know, probably because I did it once before and I actually know where I'm going this time. Which makes things a little less interesting. But, you know, what can you do? I'm not going to spoil anything else. So we're going to go down to about 2,500 feet or so here before we level off. We'll do a little pass overhead, take a look at it, make sure nothing terrain-wise has changed since I was out here a few minutes ago. There should be no reason for anything to change, but, you know, nothing surprises me at this point. Go, coming up in 2500. We'll start trimming her out. And while I'm sitting here thinking about it, too, I got a question for you guys. Now, this only applies for you guys that actually watched my last video. So, if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a little link for it here at the top. Check it out after you watch this video here. It'll probably also likely be at the end. At least if you're watching this in a recent time, right after release of that last video. Or, I guess, in simpler terms, I should say, right after this video comes out, the one we're recording right now, it'll probably be at the end. But, yeah. 
watch that video through. Let me know what you think about the different camera angles. So I, I switched between internal and external landing and takeoff configurations or camera configurations for much of the video. The entire video pretty much. Now do you guys like kind of that style? Or do you like it more, you know, kind of raw and real inside the cockpit here? Whatever you think about it, leave it in the comments down below. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious to know because although I like, I, I liked personally doing the external as well because it gives a different perspective. But at the same time, it literally took me three, maybe four times longer to edit the video. Usually I can have a video done and edited in about a day, maybe finish it up on the second day. That one literally took me four days to edit. So let me know down below if I should keep up with doing that or not. If it's worth the time doing it. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'll just let the, I guess, viewership results speak for themselves. Anyways, we're overhead of the Delta here. Got our landing strip right off the side of the strut there, off the left hand side. You can kind of see it cutting through. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull the power out here. We're going to start kind of gliding over towards the river. And yes, yes, you don't have to mention it. I am completely well aware of the nice realistic vector river that is in front of us. Good old pinstripe. <laughs> One of these days, we may just have to do something about that. But it's probably not going to be in version 1 because that's, you know, that's a little outside of the scope of this project. Although I'd like a nice river. And it'll probably get done eventually, don't get me wrong. It's probably just not going to be in version 1 of this release. Alright, we got the landing strip in sight here. Now this is a pretty tight spot to land in right now, especially with this plane. You pretty much have to hit the speed right on the dot. And obviously in this plane you get too slow, you start coming through the bushes. I'm going to clip that bush on the left hand side. <laughs> Full braking power. But that's a lot better. And last time I literally just dropped it through that bush on final. <laughs> Alright, I want to take a look down here though and see if this issue went away. Because last time I was here. Getting here a little tight. Yeah, it's still there. So, right here, there's a little bit of a crease. You can see right off the back of the tail there. And the terrain. Now, luckily this time, it's not running across the runway. So, I think we can deal with it. I'll try to fix it with a little bit of terraforming. I'll see if terraforming wants to work here. But even if it doesn't, it's not going to be an issue for this location. Let's go ahead and get the parking brake set. Hide the yoke. Avionics come off. Strobe, nav, and landing comes off. Beacon stays on. Go ahead and get the power off. And pull the mixture. And the good old annoying logbook screen that always pops up. I'll definitely be glad when there's an option to hide that. Alright, we have arrived at the new potential campsite. So, let's jump on into dev mode and let's take a look at what we can do here. Alright, here we go. Welcome to developer mode. Alright, <laughs> obviously since I did the other camp, as I told you before this, I already have a camp in here, so... Yeah, we're not going to see a lot of setup process here. 
Um, I already have, actually I do not have, I need to create another asset group. We'll say custom. Next. BGL. And this one's going to be called Toto Sit. Nah. Place here. Create. Toko sit in a glacier. Enter. Package sources. This is the one that always bugs out. Yep, okay. Package sources. Data. Oh, hey, it actually saves it with a relative path now, and not an absolute path. Okay. So, hey, I can actually change that. I don't have to edit XMLs. That's good. Save. Everything's set up. Double, double check everything. We're looking good here. Get rid of the project editor. We don't need it. Scenery editor is loaded. It's off screen. You guys are not going to be able to see it because, well, I don't feel like dragging it on the screen. Because it's going to eat up a lot of real estate if I do, and I'd rather be able to see what the heck I'm editing on. Fix my camera positioning, and then we'll say polygon. Make sure we're in dev mode, or in dev camera. We are. Tilt my view down a little bit here before I use the mouse and keyboard. We're going to go ahead and zoom on out here. And I think what I'm going to do for now, I don't know how aggressive I'm going to get here, but I'm going to place one point here, and we're just going to kind of go down the river a little bit. Like so. And we'll maybe come down here a little ways. And we'll just kind of work our way up this side of the river. And we'll go like, I don't know, maybe we'll snake around the backside of that lake there. Snake around that backside. And we might as well hit those as well. I'm not sure if this is going to be permanent. That may just be temporary more than anything. Um, no terraforming. Vegetation. Zero fill. And we'll zoom on in here and now we shouldn't have any vegetation. So we can better see our surrounding terrain. And let's see here, where's our airstrip? There's our airplane, and there's the airstrip. So we've got it all cleared out now. Now there's something new I want to try here. actually read through the SDK documentation. And I want to try to see if I can set this to just be short bushes and not the standard bushes with trees mixed in. So do that. I'm going to say vegetation. Let's take a look here. And actually, that's all bushes already in this spot. So maybe we'll... Ah, uh, there's a tree in there. So let's say vegetation scale. Bring her down quite a bit there. And heck, I could probably leave those trees in there. We may just leave those trees in there. We'll see how it goes. If I need to change it, I will. So I'm not going to do what I had in mind just yet. What I will do is, while we're here, we're just going to put a rectangle here. Close that off. Let's see what the elevation looks like. And that's a little below ground or something. We're going to hit terraforming, and we'll see if that gap closes up any. I don't know that it's going to. We'll leave it set to 200. And train doesn't reload properly right now. So if we kind of zoom out a little ways. And then we can zoom back in. And ideally, if it works right, the gap should be closed. And it's not. So we're going to set this as priority of 2. We'll give her one more shot. If it doesn't work, then we'll leave it there. Then we'll compile it and see... If it works or not. And if it doesn't, oh well, so be it. We'll fix it later on once they finally release a patch. Hopefully in some update 7. 
mid-November. All right. Well, piss on it. Terraforming's already taken up enough of our time today. We ain't gonna let it ruin all of our time. All right. So we're just gonna trace out these areas with we'll bushes here. What I want to try to do is I want to try to get some of the areas with shorter vegetation. And then we'll fill in with some of the areas with larger vegetation. That way it's not as uniform. But anyways, <laughs> this process is going to get pretty boring because, uh, I mean, I got a lot of trees to do here. And... I don't know that I'm going to... We'll see how ambitious I get. I don't know that I'm going to do this entire area. Because that's going to be a lot of tree placement. I may just do kind of the general area beside this camp here. Maybe a couple other key areas like up by that lake there. I don't know. We'll see how far I get. But yeah. <laughs> In the sake of not boring you guys, I'm going to fast forward this part. So... Enjoy a nice little time lapse here as I work on getting some bushes placed. Alright, now, after what feels like an eternity, I think the trees are done. I don't think I missed any spots, and if I did, no, I'll just come back and fix them later. Like, right up here. <laughs> right up here on this ridge. But I'll fix that here later. Because, uh, oh, I need to take a break from doing that for a second. <laughs> as you can see, or as you might have saw, I considerably brought in my coverage area because, yeah, doing this whole thing was just going to be way too much. Way too much. But I feel like we've cleared out this area a little bit better now. The bushes are a little bit better matched up with the area. And it's kind of cleared it out a little. Let's get my camera reset here because I'm fighting it. Dragging along the dev camera. All right. Now, next thing we kind of need to decide on is where we want the campsite to be at. Hmm. One minute, 37 seconds later. I'm thinking we'll just set it up right over here somewhere. Probably honestly about where I'm at. I think it would be the best spot. Because I want to leave plenty of areas where airplanes can kind of pull off as well. I think what we'll do, ignore my airplane there for a second. Let's go ahead and get scenery objects loaded up. Although I like that tent kind of blends in. All right. Um, you know, I already used this style tent. No oh, hell, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I'm just trying to think of something here that'll uh I just want something that kind of sticks out, you know. Cuz green kind of blends in. I have two the green style, green and yellow. The red kind of sticks out, but it kind of blends in at the same time. I don't know. Maybe we'll do like two different types of tents. So let's uh, let's set up the campsite. So at the center of every good campsite has to be a fire. So we'll put in, first and foremost, a campfire here. And we'll put that in and maybe we'll just build around that. All right, so we get the campfire there. I'm thinking we'll probably have. I'm kind of parked in the way, but maybe we'll have like. I don't know. Let's do. I'm 
Gonna put a savage cub there. I hate how the tail floats up like that. God, I wonder if I should just like... Of course you can't rotate it because the axis is not right. It would be nice if I could just rotate it down on its tail. God, I freaking hate that. I hope they fix that eventually. Um, I was on the right thing. Spin her around a little bit. Or rotate her around a little bit. And then over here. I'm going to go put a tent. Get the right tent selected here. We'll just put a little red tent over here. I wonder if that'll fit underneath the wing. Probably not, huh? We're probably too tall. Yeah. can't do those we can kind of I don't know set things back here a little bit maybe put one like right there and then we'll maybe put another tent go over here somewhere I don't know we're just kind of placing things around right now. What may try doing is we're going to go back over to some objects here. I'm trying my absolute best to use just default stuff, but I think I'm going to start using some third-party freeware aircraft and I'll just mark them as optional because there's some there's only so many default aircraft that are good bush aircraft set that right there just rotate it around a little bit something like that maybe Then they're just going to have to stand up on their freaking <laughs> forward legs like that, I guess. Like I said, maybe one day that'll be fixed. Alright, but let's go back over here towards the camp. Or campfire. And I figured you probably don't want to fire too close to your tents. So maybe we have it over here. And maybe we have like, I don't know. Let's do, take one of these here. Driftwood logs. Let's see which one looks better. Yeah, we'll use the other one. What kind of little like... log here by the fire. Use it to sit on or something. I don't need that. Let's see. Look through Dave's library here and see what he's got going on. Yeah, we'll go ahead and place some wood here. Every campfire needs some wood, right? Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and just we'll place a, a loose pile of wood here somewhere. I guess maybe off to the side here. 
It's a heck of a lot of firewood for this area. I wonder where they got it from, saying as this area is mostly bushes. <laughs> yeah, we won't put too much thought into it. Go through the people's library here. We'll play some static people. Make it look a little bit more alive. Not deserted. And maybe we'll put this guy like over here on the log or something. And he's floating a little bit. We may have to adjust the log just a little bit to get it so it looks like he's sitting actually on the log and not floating in the air. It's going to make the log look a little unrealistic. A little bigger than it should be, but... Eh. We'll just scale it up nicely here. There we go. That should work. Yeah. It's definitely looking a lot more like a campsite now. Let's put a chair over here. They will kind of move him over here. I think it looks like he's kind of... Having a conversation with that guy or something. Kind of meet the line of sight, you know? Yeah, maybe we'll move that chair a little bit closer to him. Like that's kind of where he got up from or something, or where he's going to. Just like that. All right, we got some wood stacked up. Got a campfire. A slightly oversized log <laughs> with the guy sitting on. But I had to make it look like he's actually sitting on the dang thing. Got this guy here talking. Two tents in the background. I wonder if anybody has like a freaking George Foreman grill. <laughs> Let's see here. Grill. I need to probably start writing down what libraries I'm using. Let me do that before we get too carried away here. One minute, 37 seconds later. Honestly, probably don't need to put a grill out here. <laughs> Something tells me they're probably camp cooking over the campfire, you know? But yeah, that brings me to the next thing. Let's check out his asset pack because I know he's got a bunch of stuff. Well, he's even got some camping tents in his pack. I'm going to use my models though. I will just put a big old rusty bathtub out here in the middle of nowhere, shall we? <laughs> think we need any of this. Fishing fish, what? That's a fish. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't need a hose. Glider fox. Oh. Camping bottle. Yeah, I guess we can put a put a bottle over here beside the chair or something. Maybe he's got one. He looks like a, a bottle type of dude. Put a bottle there. It's another log. It's, a, it's the chair I was using, right? Yep. Another tent.
Maybe we put like some some cones at like each end of the runway or something. I don't know, something like that. At least the runway's kind of marked that way. Wow, those cones are like way off, huh? Oh, okay. Just had one in the wrong direction, I guess. Do one like, I don't know, like right there. Right there, I guess. Something to just kind of vaguely mark out the runway. Of course, they're not visible from that far away, I guess, are they? I don't know. It's something. <laughs> Maybe some rocks would be better. Do a little bit of fine tuning here. I guess we'll put a chainsaw here somewhere. Okay, we'll stick it here by the tent. Something like that. I may come back and add some more details here and there and other updates, but I think that's a good start. Probably going to have to do something with those cones. Maybe replace them with some rocks or something. Something that's a little bit more natural. And then I need to fix those trees on the hill as well. But as it is in this video now, <laughs> my screen is flickering like crazy. I have no idea what's going on with it. I need to figure this out because it's getting really annoying. So I think this is where I'm going to call it. I think we made some good progress here. It's looking kind of like a little campsite. Got a little couple airplanes, a couple dudes hanging out here, some cut firewood, a couple of tents. Yeah. I think we'll call it good here. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hopefully this video wasn't too boring for you guys. And obviously the ones that did find it boring, you're probably not watching at this point anyways. <laughs> but yeah, it's not not a lot of action in these videos. It's uh it's pretty meticulous, pretty yeah, not a lot of action. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> but if you guys did enjoy this video, definitely let me know down in the comments down below. That'll kind of determine whether or not I continue doing this series or not. I'll probably do a couple of them either way. But, you know, if it's not working out and if it's too boring, if people don't want to see it, obviously I'm not going to keep producing it. You know, it's not worth it for me to go through and edit it. But if you guys are enjoying it, I'll keep doing them. I'll keep editing them. Now, if you like the video... Go ahead and give it a like for me. And, of course, if you feel oh so inclined, you could consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. You know, 95% of people don't subscribe to the channel. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm not asking you to. And you certainly don't have to. But if you want to be part of the 5% that has subscribed to the channel, yeah, consider subscribing. <laughs> it definitely gives me fuel fuel to the fire to continue making these videos for you guys. I'm doing the videos because I like doing the videos, but also if I know that somebody's getting enjoyment out of it, it just makes it that much better to continue editing them and to continue producing them each week. So, <sighs> I'm tired. That was a lot of, <laughs> that was a lot of clicking. I'm, my wrist is still hurting from all that clicking for the tree placement. <laughs> So, with that said, I'm getting out of here. I, I'm going to go take a break and do something that doesn't involve moving a mouse around for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Rotonut44, over and out.